Hey, how's it going everyone? Don here from VR Gamer Dude. And you know, today we are here at NVIDIA GTC, was walking the XR section, and lo and behold, I just ran into one of my favorite companies in the world, Vitcher. So we are here at their booth today. We're gonna go ahead and check out the new immersive 3D technology that they're doing with AI. Uh, I have actually been checking that out at home a little bit on my own, on my 4090, but today we're gonna get to see it on an RTX 5090. And then I'm gonna get to see a few things that I can't tell you about just yet, but really cool stuff is coming from Vitcher. So today I'm here with David from Vitcher and he's gonna tell us a little bit of more about their immersive 3D and what it can do for you. So David, tell me a little bit about what went into the creation of the immersive 3D app. Yeah, so like uh, for the VR headset, uh, people always ask where the 3D content, right? So they have to download the 3D movies online and it's really hard to find. And after Apple has um, the immersive, called an immersive video, mm -hmm. and uh, they have to use the iPhone to shoot the video in the landscape view, and then you have to create the videos by yourself for the new videos. But for, what about for the old videos? So we create this uh, immersive 3D functionality that you can transfer all the videos into 3D simultaneously, which means that you can play 3D games. Okay. Yeah, so this is why we collaborate with NVIDIA uh, for the, the latest uh, graphic cards, 5090, and then you can play games in 3D in real time without any latency. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and also, yeah, and also the video is really crazy is that you can um, have that video on your iPhone mm -hmm. or your mobile phone or on your computer, uh, which means that you can watch your uh, Netflix or Apple TV, any video, YouTube video, any video in 3D in real time, which means that you can watch, you know, football games or NBA games all in 3D. Oh, this is an entire new world. That is fantastic. You know, like I said, I have been testing the feature at my house uh -huh. on my PC ever since you guys released the PC yeah. version. Now, I know you said it started on iOS. Mm -hmm. We've got it on PC. When are we going to see it on Android? Um, yeah, so that's a good question. The problem with the, with, with, with the immersive 3D is that um, you have to have a good MPU, okay. which is the neural processing unit. Absolutely. Because like we embed a VLM, a large model, okay. very, uh, visual large model inside this MPU. So we calculate each frame and then we recognize the objects and then we export uh, alpha layer. Okay. And then we'll apply that layer into the actual graphic. Okay. And then we split them into two eyes. Okay. So this is how people view them in 3D. But the, the, the beauty part is that we can do this part within 20 milliseconds, each frame, each frame. Fantastic. So if you have tried like Apple Vision Pro, mm -hmm. you can transfer each photo into a 3D photo, but the transfer time is two to three seconds. It, it does take a quite yeah, a second. Yeah, take a, take a while. So you can do video. Okay. Yeah, with that latency, right? But uh, we just limit that into 20 milliseconds. So this is a breakthrough. And then we can do games, we can do videos, we can do live videos. Mm -hmm. And which is really important because like people consume those videos today, even for TikTok, mm -hmm. right? So we can convert all of them, portrait or landscape, anything, and your personal videos and personal photos, all in 3D. So this is really revolutionary. Oh man, that is fantastic. Now, another thing I noticed is it also converts not just video and gaming content. This has literally converted my entire computer. Computer, to exactly. PD. Exactly. So why did you guys do that intentionally to, to make the desktop 3D so that the entire experience is 3D? Or was that just because it of the way that the, the software works? Yeah, so like... Uh, for desktop, um, like uh, people really want to see any of their photos in their album or the videos in their, um, in their photos or YouTube video or Netflix. So we just make it like a system uh, level okay. uh, stuff. And then the beauty part is that, um, like uh, if you browse the uh, YouTube, right, all the thumbnails, they are in 3D. Okay. So which is, I, for myself, I feel this is a really stunning part. Yes. Because like they open a little window and you can see, okay, so in the inside of the window, this is a little 
sweetie guy inside, right? And then I'll have like more attention on each video's thumbnail. And then I can imagine, okay, if I click on this video, I'm gonna see the entire video in 3D, which is amazing. Yeah, and, and also like if you have more windows inside this AR space, you're gonna see the window pop up in the space. Yes, yes. Yeah, if you drag a window to another one and you can see another window just up on that layer, mm -hmm. you can feel that is 3D layer. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a whole new different experience. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now we are showing it today on the, the 5090. I am using it on the 4090. What would be the absolute minimum spec machine that uh, a, a possible customer could run this on? Yeah, so, um, Based on our testing, uh, the minimum is 3060. Is it 3060? 3060, right. Okay. Um, the reason why we run that amazing game of 5090 is because, you know, like we have to run this VLR model on GPU. Absolutely. Uh, and also you have to run a game on GPU as well. Oh. So they are competing for the GPU resources. Okay. Yeah, so the 5090 really a monster, right? You can see that this is the highest ultimate effect of the RTX ray tracing. And then you can do the 3D effect without any GPU resources limitation. Okay. Yeah, so this all in 3D, all smooth, and we just tested it, so it's at 296 FPS. Man, that is free. This is crazy, that is crazy, Zane. So, okay, so now one thing I see that you are also wearing today is the Pro Neckband. Now, you guys have seen oh, our review already. I, you guys know I am in love with this thing. This is like my mobile office. It's my mobile entertainment. Now, one of the things when the Neckband was on pre-order that was mentioned was that the immersive 3D video was going to be coming to the Neckband. However, in the recent weeks, we have seen that that has now been pulled back to a one-minute preview. Mm -hmm. So... Is that something that is still being worked on? Or are we just finally at the point where we've realized that the neckband compute is just not going to be enough to do that AI 2D to 3D conversion? Yeah, so that depends on the effect level okay. you can achieve, right? So on neckband, we already have uh, a minimum model, uh, a VRL model on neckband, uh, which can have a pretty decent uh, suited effect. Absolutely. But uh, still, you know, Vitro have very high standard. So we want to improve that model. And then we're going to have like uh, some experience on par with the 5090 or uh, iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Just because of the MPU resources. Okay. You know, iPhone have a really good MPU. And they really do. And a MacBook, right? So, um, on the MacBand, uh, the Qualcomm chip, um, they are, they are catching up, right? They are catching up. So we are trying to have a tailored, a model, which is a smaller model, but we can achieve like a 90% or 80% of the effect of the current model we have on iPhone, iOS, and, and the Windows, um, and then release that, which means that you can see any like uh, Netflix or uh, Disney Plus or YouTube all in real time, 3D, locally computed on okay. neckband. Okay. So right now the one minute limit is because we calculate in the cloud, and then you get a best effect. 3D effect, um, because like you have to upload the video and then uh, process that and, and download the video, now, right. right? So we also approach another way, another path is that we can do the cloud computing in real time. Really? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. And also uh, we're collaborating with uh, NVIDIA for that because NVIDIA has the best infra in the world. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, NVIDIA and Vitcher, we can make something together amazing. Absolutely. So, you know, I know you guys are really doing well with partnerships as well. Now, one of the things that I found with the Pro Neckband to be just a game changer was the full Google certification. Yeah. So how was it working with Google to get that in place? Yeah, I think uh, this is hard, right? So this is the first wearable device has the Google uh, services, yes. on uh, which means that you can access millions of apps. And also, um, we are going to announce more partnership with Google. Okay. And so we think the partnership with the content, with the infra, is really important for consumers. Okay. And uh, we are dedicated in the best devices okay. we have, and also the best uh, API and SDK we have. Okay. And then we can pour every best part together. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is a really amazing device that uh, I watch, I mean, like a Netflix uh, video on the airplane 
for a very long time because so you can download them inside this. Uh, you have a lot of storage in that. Device. Yes, a lot of storage and uh, and the Netflix all in HD. Um, so we just solved all the problem with the previous MacBand. And this one, I think it, we can satisfy most of the people's needs right now. And you said Netflix. I noticed that we did recently see that come to the MedBand. Uh, the yeah. official apps are now available on the Spacewalker side. So very cool there. So where do you see the future of all this, David? Yeah, so we are trying to make it is more powerful and lighter and uh, longer battery life. Okay. And eventually we can just remove that. I think the first step, this is a wire, right? Yes. And uh, I think the first step, we're going to remove this wire, wireless. Wow, you, you're, 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 you must be psychic today because that was literally going to be my next question is, will we ever see a pair of vitro glasses that are wireless? Yeah, I think uh, we are coming there. Okay. Yeah, so I think uh, this, is, uh, this, is a re this is the future uh, we're dreaming of. And uh, we're just heading there. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, just after the like uh, technology evolved, all technology evolved, the AI, the infra, the GPU, MPU, CPU, and, and also the, the wireless uh, connectivity. Yes. Right, Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 8 in the future. And then we believe that uh, we can cut off this wire, just like we cut off the wire of earphone. Okay. Yeah, remember the year from Absolutely. Four? Absolutely. It's a wire. Yes. Right? No, no batteries either anymore. And that's why. And uh, the first generation, the wireless is that uh, the neckband. The neckband earphone. Okay. And then we cut the wire. It's uh, TWS. Right? So we believe that um, the days will come. Okay. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Now, one last technical question, and then I'll let you get back on sure. to helping some of these fine of folks that are here to see your technology. Yeah. So being that the neck band is Android-based, fully Google certified yeah. now, do we have any ambitions or are there any on the horizon possibility of Android XR on the neck band or that you're working with Android XR certification? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, we are in the uh, pretty constructive uh, conversations okay. with Google, and uh, because this one is uh, Google already, and I think uh, Android XR are gonna elevate a user experience into another level. Okay, right. So because you know we have the we have the Google uh, store here, and then we have our own Spacewalker. Absolutely, which means like that you can have your own street up, and you can open up multiple windows, but that automatically come up with uh, Android XR. Right, so I think that's going to be a really amazing experience. We're going to have Android XR on the neck band. And I think uh, this is something we are really looking forward to happen this okay. year or next year. Really? Yeah. So, so you're, you're pretty much already in talks. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fantastic yeah. news. Because yeah. I, I really do, David, I, I do see Android XR as the next logical progression of this technology. So, yeah, I think the Android XR is... It's, it's going to be the same as Android. Yes. Right? So it's, it's to maximize the user experience by adopting more and more hardware mm -hmm. makers. Okay. Right? As the, as the leader of in this industry, one of the leaders of in this industry, uh, we were really looking forward to embrace the Android XR ecosystem. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, I'm in the glasses, and while I have experienced this before, I'm going to say... The depth looks a little cleaner. Now, that could be the desktop that they're using. I love this desktop, by the way, where we've got a lot of foreground, background. The star field looks fantastic. The, 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 the menu bar is pushed forward where the icons are pushed back. It's just creating a very nice experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and launch a game. We're going to go ahead and launch Forza 4, and I'm going to see the real-time 2D to 3D conversion happening with a fast motion. So, all right, let's go ahead and get in there. Okay, so we got the game starting here. Already I am seeing phenomenal-looking 3D. Very good. You know, obviously you guys have seen my review of the Pro Glasses here. Very good color representation. Very good contrasting. Oh man, that looks fantastic. 
So I'm getting a really nice depth pop here on the background. The car is looking just, just beautifully, beautifully three-dimensional. Oh, those rain, the little rain streaks are hitting the, the front of the screen. That was just gorgeous. So, all right, let's get out of the uh, the, the uh, intro here and let's uh, actually get into a little game. Okay, wow. Okay, so now we're actually in the 3D rendered scene here and the 3D is just popping. I mean, this this is like some of the most immersive 2D to 3D that I have seen yet. And I've been messing with 3D for a long time. Glasses free, glasses based, VR based, AR based. Just absolutely insane. Not even following the track. I'm just driving, having a good time, checking it all out. He's, wow. Absolutely wow. And you guys know, since I got into VR, I don't play 2D games anymore. This is going to make me want to play 2D games. Secure. As I take a drive through the woods here. <laughs> Love that. That's so cool. Now, one of the things, you know, that a lot of people have asked me is, is do I see ghosting? Do I see any crosstalk? You know, the, the more technical term for it as I ran into a tree. And no, absolutely. This is not stereoscopic shutter glasses. This is not something where you're going to have an image overlaid against another image where you're going to see things like crosstalk. So it, it is just super clean. I mean, I, we're talking like IMAX clue. It, this is nuts. She's it's fake. It's wild. Yes, you guys always use cars, but I guess it could be okay. I want to do this right here. So now I'm going to this just this quickly. I'm, I'm looking at the 3D image. I'm going to go ahead and pull these up and just kind of compare to the 2D. So you do that slowly. Obviously, you guys aren't seeing that. And oh, my God, this is night and day. I mean, night and day. And not only the 3D, the color clarity and definition is kicking this monitor's butt. I, I mean, this is a much better looking, cleaner, clearer, more colorful image than what I'm seeing on the display behind me. So it's going to be incredible what you're going to see in these glasses. So I'm going to go ahead and come out now and we're going to go ahead and get some final thoughts. Well, David, thank you so much for your time thank today you. and thank you for uh, showing me everything again. I did see a few things that we cannot talk about just yet, but they are coming. And as soon as I can get them on my head, you will be the first to know. We'll see you in the next one.